And we come now to Matthew chapter 2. And verse 1 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and that would be just as the prophet Micah foretold in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, In the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And of course, these wise men followed the star, the special revelation star. It wasn't a star, it wasn't Betelgeuse or Sirius or it wasn't a planet. It was a supernatural light that looked like a star from our perspective. And uh, they came from the east to Jerusalem looking for the newborn messianic king. We know that because verse 2 says, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And uh, they knew from Old Testament scriptures, the book of Numbers, that there was a prophecy that the Messiah would, the birth of the Messiah would be accompanied by a supernatural star, a light in the sky. So they're following it. And it says in verse 3, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And believe me, whenever Herod, that crackpot, was troubled, all Jerusalem would be troubled with him because he was a nut that could fly off the handle on a whim, let alone when he felt threatened, when he felt that his throne was in danger of, of being taken by someone else, which would be the case if he heard of a newborn king. So the whole city was trembling. Verse 4, And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. He wants to know if these wise men got it right and where the Messiah would be born according to the Scripture. See, he believed the Bible. He didn't live the Bible, but he believed it. He believed it was the Word of God. And he knew that it would tell him where the Christ would be born. Verse 5, And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of you shall come a governor who shall rule my people Israel. Well, King Herod has the information. He knows the where. Now he's got to know the when. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily, privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. See, so he, he knows where the Christ will be born. Now he's got to figure out how long ago it happened because he's got to calculate how many innocent little boys He's going to slaughter in order to get to this newborn king. 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. And he is a liar. He is planning to murder the king, Jesus. But of course he can't come out and say that. So he pretends that he wants to worship him. Verse 9. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And they must have just been thrilled. They saw that star again. What a wonderful thing. And of course they believed King Herod when he said that he wanted to worship the child as well. Um, but look at verse 10. And when they saw the star, where the star stopped, they rejoiced with exceedingly joy, exceedingly great joy. They found where their king was. It was a long journey, but now they're close to seeing the Messiah. 11. And when they were come into the house, and by the way, the, Jesus was not visited by these wise men while he was still in the stable. 
he came to the house, the Bible says. They saw the young child. He wasn't an infant, a newborn anymore, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And because there were three gifts, the tradition arose that there were three wise men. But the Bible doesn't say that there are three. And in fact, if I was going to uh, venture a guess, I would say many more than three. They probably came to this area with a large entourage of people, um, if for no other reason, protection on their journey. There were a lot of robbers in that day. And if you're carrying valuables like they were, you better have some protection. And it says in verse 12, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So again, they were wide-eyed and all excited about the birth of Jesus. And so they just naturally thought that everybody else would be too, including the king, especially since he you know, appeared to be so excited about the possibility of worshiping this newborn king. You know, they just bought it hook, line, and sinker. And they would have went back and told him if it wasn't for God who sent them a revelation, said, don't do it. The guy's a liar. So God thwarts the plan of Herod, thwarts the plan of Satan, once again, who tried to cut off the messianic line either before it arrived, before he arrived, or, or after he arrived. 13. And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And Joseph, he would have just hung around. And why not? You've got a, you know, you've got a young child, and you're going to pick up your stakes and move someplace else to a different country? Not likely, unless God tells you to do it. And he did, so he will. And of course, God could have taken care of Herod and killed him on the spot and prevented this from happening, but instead, he will allow it. He will allow Herod to exercise his free will, which he does allow sinners to do in this evil world. Sin must run its course. Evil must run its course. And sometimes, you know, God's people have to make adjustments, and sometimes it's not easy. And it wasn't easy. I don't believe for a second it was easy for Joseph and Mary and Jesus to head out of country, go down to Egypt. But they did. And so it says in verse 14, When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. So, as usual, Joseph was quick to obey the word of the Lord. I wonder... God chose him and Mary to be the parents of his son. 15. And it says, And he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Which had a lot of people in the Old Testament times confused. Because the Bible taught that Jesus would be a Nazarene, the Messiah would be a Nazarene. The Bible taught that he, which is in northern Israel, uh, the Bible taught that Jesus, the Messiah, would be born in Bethlehem, which is in southern Israel. And then the Bible also taught that the Son of God would come out of Egypt. Well, how in the world could all three of those things be true? They seem to contradict each other. But in God's good time, it all worked out. That's why you have to trust the Word of God. Don't figure, don't try to figure out what seems to be a contradiction. Just let God take care of it. Just believe it. Believe all so-called conflicting scriptures and just trust that God's going to figure it out in his good time because he will. 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, in other words, they ignored his demand, that they return and tell him where the child was. Oh, he was angry. He was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and killed all the children who were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time 
which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. So just an absolute slaughter by this wicked, wicked person. 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Jeremiah 31 verse 15 predicted this and it happened. So even in this, prophecy was being fulfilled surrounding the birth of Jesus the Messiah. What a horrible thing for these parents to endure. And they would not be comforted. And I don't blame them. And Herod will pay shortly. Because look at 19. But when Herod was dead, stop right there. That fool, murdered, innocent little boys in order to hang on to his throne. And he lost it when he died. He murdered innocent little boys to try to get to the Son of God and murdered him also, and now he is dead and standing before God the Father, whose eternal Son he tried to kill. It doesn't say anything other than when Herod was dead, but you know there's a whole lot more to the story than that. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. And this is the third of four dreams given to Joseph directly by the Lord. Saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So it's, you're free to return. God gave Joseph the all clear. 21. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. Now, they left Judea, Bethlehem, when they went to Egypt. So that's evidently where Joseph is returning to. But God didn't tell him to go back to Bethlehem. He just said, go to, go to Israel. So in verse 22, it says, But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And so the fourth and final dream given to Joseph revealed to him that he needed to go up north, up to Galilee. And this is where the other scripture is fulfilled. Verse 23, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. So, actually, Mary and Joseph have come full circle because they began in Nazareth. That's where they were from. Remember, that's where Mary received the visit from the angel Gabriel, telling her that she was going to have the Messiah. And uh, so after a, a long time, this is where they end up. They end up back in Nazareth, and that's where Jesus will be raised. 